Hey guys, Tech Made Easy, and thank you so much for clicking on our video today. Well, guys, this is the Delta 2 Max testing video you've been waiting for. This thing is a beast. It can power devices at 2,400 watts with a surge of 4,800 watts. And this thing is expandable to up to 6 kilowatts, which is crazy with two add-on batteries. Listen, in this video, we are going to be doing a ton of testing. All right, I'm going to be doing power tests to test the 2,400 watts. I'm going to do a sine wave test. I'm going to do a pass-through charging test. I'm going to do a coffee maker test. I'm going to do a microwave test. I am going to charge this to see how long it takes to charge. We're going to do our refrigerator test. I'll go over expansion, but let's go ahead and get this party started. Hi, this is Al from Tech Made Easy with a really quick message. The video you're about to watch is sponsored. We received this product from the vendor. But keep in mind, we will be very honest with you as we review the product. That is very important to us. If you like our video, I sure hope you give us a thumbs up. I hope you share our video. And last, I really hope you subscribe and become a part of the family. Thank you. Hey guys, in a moment, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be covering in this video. But I really wanted to take a moment and apologize. You know, this video should have been out a while ago, but I just had so many changes in my life. Not only losing Brooklyn, but a few more things that really affected my life. And at the end of the day, I really wanted to come out with a quality video. It's not about the quantity. It's definitely about the quality. So I appreciate your patience. Well, let's go ahead and show you what we're covering today. All right, guys, like we said in the beginning of the video, this is what we're going to be covering. We're going to do an EPS test. We are going to do a dual car charging test. That's right. This has two XT60 ports and you can use two car chargers. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to do a pure sine wave test, a refrigerator test. You know us, an AC charging test, a coffee and microwave test our living room test. I'm going to do a power test to see if we can get that 2,400 watts. Let's see how it does. I'm going to do a noise level test. I'm also going to go over Delta 2 Max expansion. I'm going to go over a pass-through charging test. And I'm going to be doing a solar test with two solar panels. Again, this thing has got two XT60 ports. So here we are in the living room. And the question is, can the Delta Max run the majority of items in our living room? We have our 55-inch TV. We've got our Dyson fan. We have our cable modem. We have our Wi-Fi router. We have our smart cameras and our smart home devices. Well, I guess let's go ahead and find out. All right. Well, we unplugged everything and plugged it into the back of the Delta 2 Max. Now the AC is not turned on yet. I'll go ahead and turn that on with the app. Again, one of the nice things about the app is you can control AC, DC, USB, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and turn on AC. And what we're gonna look for is what type of startup power do we have here with these devices? All right, and then I'll turn the fan on as well. We've got the fan sitting here. So we'll turn the Dyson fan on as well. So let's start off by turning on AC and uh, we'll watch. The lights are turning on already on the back of the TV. All right, 50. All right, so not a lot yet. I have to turn the TV on, I think, manually because I believe I did have it off. So let me go ahead and turn on the TV. All right, so TV's turning on now. And uh, we are currently at 142, 43. All right, 148 is the highest I see so far. 148 with 149, 150. Okay, so 150 so far. The TV does turn back off temporarily and turn back on. The Roku does that for some reason. So um, let's get that to turn back on. 
I think we saw 150 watts so far. All right. And uh, while the TV is turning on, um, come on now. <laughs> it just takes a moment. Everything is turning on, as you can see. The router, you know, our Wi-Fi equipment, our smart cameras, the TV lights are on in the back. So uh, we're almost there. Okay, the TV's back on. I just saw 157. All right, 155 now. And uh, let's turn on the Dyson fan and see what we get with that now. So I'm going to turn on the fan. And I believe it's kind of on medium. I'm at 150, 160, 164. Easy, easy for this Delta II Max, but I figured I'd show you it. It's always good to see these tests. And I'm going to go ahead and raise this up to 10 now. You can see uh, we're at 208, I saw her a second ago. So we're over 200 watts. Now with a battery at 50% capacity, as you can see here, it says it can run this stuff for four hours, right? So if we had a 100% battery, we probably should be able to run this stuff for at least about eight hours. There's an example. Now don't forget, you can add two batteries to this, right? I mean, that's, you know, you're talking, what, eight, uh, 16, possibly over 20 hours if you added the other two batteries, and that's just with this 200 watts. So look at that. Just an example, if you ever lost power, right, that you could watch TV, you could use your cable uh, modem and your router, and uh, just keep yourself busy until your power comes back on. And yeah, you could have a refrigerator connected to this also. If it's an old refrigerator, that's a different story. But we've got more tests coming, so let's go ahead and check those out. What about a cup of coffee? Now, did you know that most coffee makers use around 750 watts? This is the Keurig K Supreme Plus. This uses up to 1400 watts. Again, this has power. Don't worry about it. And you're making a cup of coffee. It's pretty quick, right? So let's go ahead and turn on the AC outlet. So the coffee maker is powered. I'll put this somewhere for now. Let me turn on the coffee maker. Actually, just open it up. Take out the K-cup. Put in one of my favorites now. I love this stuff. Put it in. All right, she's ready to go. I'm going to hit eight for an eight ounce cup of coffee. And uh, actually, let's change that to four ounces, just so it's not running too long. All right. And let's go ahead and hit the K and watch the screen. Ready? 1450 something watts. I'll catch that and put it on the screen. But look at that. Just to make a cup of coffee, all right, you'll see it coming out in a moment. There it goes. But look at the amount of wattage that it uses, right? Not only for surge, towards the end it won't use as much, but that is a sweet cup of Tech Made Easy coffee. I don't do decaf, but I don't drink a lot of coffee. But look at that, we're already at zero now because it's pretty much finished. But I just wanted to show you that this could easily make a cup of coffee. And we're still at the 48%. So, you know, it didn't take much to make that quick cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm having another cup of coffee now. And if you wanted to know if X-Boost was on, nope. I hardly use X-Boost. X-Boost was off during this test. So what about toast? Could I make toast using my Delta II Max? I mean, it's not like you'd probably do that, but maybe you would. So let's turn on the AC outlet. Okay, we got power on our toaster. And let's go ahead and pull this down and see what we get. You'd be surprised how many watts this thing pulls. Ready? 900. All right, so we're at 800 and change, as high as 900 with a little bit of surge on a toaster setting of four. I like my toast to be a little dark, but look at that. And now I'm at 47% on the battery. I was probably close to that a moment ago. 887 watts. Look at that. I mean, do people understand? I mean, again, you're probably not making toast when your power goes out, 
but it's working. It is working. And I'm going to go ahead and just kick this up. Well, and you saw it work. You can make toast. Next question, can it run a microwave? Now, let me just tell you, many power stations can't run microwaves. Only the big boys, to be honest with you, right? This, this thing definitely uses uh, some power. Now, I'm going to turn on the AC outlet. All right, the microwave is on. And I'll show you, this thing is uh, 1,100 watts, but I've seen this thing go as high as 1,700 watts. Now, I've got some popcorn in there. I'm going to put this on for a minute. All right, we're going to start this and see. So I'm going to go ahead and press one, and we're going to want to watch the screen here just so we could see what type of power. All right, ready? Here it goes, 500, 1,790, 1,780. This is crazy, right? But this is a 2,400-watt power station that has a surge like you wouldn't believe. And I've got popcorn in there and it's gonna take a moment to start popping. But that is pretty darn cool. Again, are you gonna use a microwave when your power goes out? Some of you might, but you hear that popcorn popping, right? And you look at this consistent wattage and X boost is off. Let me show you that by the way. As you can see here, X boost is off. So we are making popcorn. Oh boy, can't wait. All right. And there you go. I've got me popcorn. So this next test is to see if the Delta II Max has a pure sine wave inverter. If you're going to buy a power station, I would highly recommend that you get one and make sure it's pure sine wave. And here's why. If you got a power station and it wasn't pure sine wave and you plugged in a fan, well, you might hear a humming noise. I mean, it might be pretty loud, to be honest with you, but you wouldn't get that with the Delta II Max because this is pure sine wave. If you plugged in a projector or possibly a TV, when a power station isn't pure sine wave, you might see some distortion on the screen. But the Delta II Max is pure sine wave. Let's go ahead and test that out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the AC outlet. We'll see what type of voltage we're getting. All right, so we're getting 120.9 volts. Now I'm going to switch this over to pure sine wave. All right. And I'm just going to adjust this. And as you can see there, that is really smooth. And that is pure sine wave. You know, when you look at modified sine wave, etc., look that up. You'll actually see that it's not that way. But now, how would it be if I went ahead and plugged in something with a couple hundred watts would it still be pure sine wave? Well, let's find out with a load. So AC is still on, and we're going to go ahead and put this battery on this charger and see if we still have pure sine wave, even with a load and a couple hundred watts. This is about a 700 watt charger. All right, 100. 200. 300, 400, 400, almost 500 watts coming up. There you go. And that's the fan on the charger turning on. So almost 500 watts and we still get pure sine wave. A uh, slight jaggedy, a little bit different, but still pure sine wave power. So that is a success. This next test is for pass-through charging. Now again, not all power stations allow you to do this. And what is pass-through charging is simply 
I am now charging this power station, as you can see. I've got 990 watts going in to charge it. Now, some power stations don't allow you to plug anything in while you're charging the power station, right? But the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max does. And I'm going to show you that not only am I going to charge the power station, but I'll be able to plug in a, you know, five to 700 watt charger. And let's go ahead and put a battery on this thing. And I'll turn on the AC outlet in a minute. And uh, let's see if pass-through charging works. So again, 900 and something going into the unit. And as you can see here, it is going up. We are now charging this dead battery and uh, 300 watts going out, 1300 watts coming in. So what they're doing here now is they're making sure that you can still charge the power station at the wattage that you want, which was 990 watts. And yet we are now also powering this device so it can charge a battery. And as you can see here, this is a success. An example of pass-through charging, something you must get with your new power station. Our next test is on a feature called EPS, Emergency Power Supply. Now, some people call this UPS, which is Uninterrupted Power Supply. Now, EcoFlow doesn't do that. And most power stations can't say they have a true UPS because UPSs are usually five milliseconds or quicker. Now, what is an EPS used for? Or let's just say even a UPS, right? Most people, you know, not, I'm not going to say most people, but some people use UPSs where they connect, let's say, their laptop computer to this, right? And it stays connected permanently as a power supply. And what happens is, at that point, they're really not using the battery, What's happening is the laptop is taking the power from the AC outlet that's connected to the Delta II Max. And when the power goes out, the Delta II Max will kick on and that will reduce downtime. That's just an example. But let's go ahead and see how fast the Delta II Max EPS feature is. All right, so we're going to do our EPS test. As you can see here, right now we've got 400 and something watts coming through, 487 watts coming through the AC outlet. So let me turn on the um, AC outlets in the back of the Delta II Max. Okay, and now you're going to see that that light is using 43 watts. And you're like, wait a minute, why is a light using 43 watts? Well, that's because that's one of those older bulbs. So make sure you change your bulbs to LED. You know, 5 watts, 10 watts is what an LED light normally uses. Now, we've got that switch on, which controls the AC outlet. So the AC outlet, you know, the AC is coming through here. And this light is simply using the power provided by the AC outlet. And our goal is, when I turn that off, that switch off, how fast... Will the light turn back on and we see the switch on here? So I'm going to count to three and I'm going to hit this light switch. And what we want to do is watch the bulb and watch the screen. Ready? One, two, three. I mean, that was pretty quick. That really was. And as you can see now, it is actually being powered by the Delta II Max. There's no AC power coming in. And it is simply being powered by the Delta II Max, that light. So that was pretty quick, but let's do it again. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. We can watch the switch. One, two, three. All right, so it turned back on. Give it a minute. You'll see the AC charging start to uh, come up. All right. And I'm going to do it one more time for you. We're going to turn it off and see how fast the switch is. All right, EPS. One, two, three. Not bad. Not bad at all. It actually is pretty quick. And that is your testing to show you how EPS works. 
All right, so here is a ceramic heater. Now these use wattage, okay? Let's go ahead and see how much wattage this uses and if the Delta II can actually handle it. Let me turn on the AC outlet. Okay, we're at 31% also, but let's go ahead and turn on to level one. All right, so far we're at 500 watts on level one. All right, 1,000 watts, 1,200 watts. All right, so this thing definitely uses some power. Well, let's go ahead and kick it up to level number two. All right, there you go, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600. So look at that, 1,600 watts on this little small ceramic heater. And now it's adjusting back down to about 13 and change, it looks like. It is on high, too, by the way. I changed the temperature all the way up, too. So you're on setting number two and you're on high and this thing is hot by the way so yeah we're about 1300 watts uh, after the surge and as you can see no issues there this is a power sucker <laughs> but a successful test so here's a power test can the delta 2 max power probably about 2000 watts right i mean these are around 700 watts so 7, 14, 2100, we'll see. I'm gonna start off by putting the battery on this charger and then we'll put the other two on, but can it do that? Well, let's find out. All right, we're starting here. 200 coming up. 300. 400, 400, all right, about 490 it looks like so far, 500, okay, 500, 500 watts, let's put on this battery, here we go, 600, 700, 800, 1,000, coming up on 1,100 watts. There you go, 1,100. All right, 1,130 something watts. Again, let's go ahead and put this on now. All right, we got all three going. All right, coming up to 1,300 watts. There you go. 1400. 1500. 1500. All right, so almost 1600 watts. Interesting. All right, 1600. There we go, we hit 1600. So it seems to hang around 1600 with three of these chargers. What else can I connect to this thing? So the next question is now that I'm running the ceramic heater and I've got it on setting one right now. All right, I'm gonna put this up to setting number two and see if I can run a heat gun as well. So setting number two, 1600. I think that's just the initial surge. I've got it on high also. So, looks like it's settling back down in a moment, like it was before. So we're dropping a little bit, we'll be at about 1300. Let's put the heat gun on low and see what we get. I'm gonna start off with low on the heat gun. There you go, 1800 watts on low with the heat gun and the ceramic heater. Now I'll turn the heat gun on high and let's see what happens. 2,500 and change. 2,500 and change with the heat gun and the ceramic heater. This is powerful stuff, guys. This is amazing. The inverter 
on this thing is something else. And uh, believe me, this heat gun is hot. So be very careful. Don't do these tests at home. I do them for you guys to help you out and showing you how powerful this thing is. And yep, this is a successful test. And we're still going. So we've got the uh, almost 1600 watts, maybe a little more. And did you know that you could see that on the EcoFlow app? You could actually see the wattage being used. You could see your battery percentage. So let's go ahead and let me see, because it looks like I'm getting 1630 something watts depending, right? Yeah. So we're as high as 16... I saw 1630 a moment ago. Let's go ahead and turn on this heating gun now. All right, I'm going to put it on low, and uh, let's see what happens. And again, I'm just going to put this out of the way, <laughs> but it's turned on right now, low. 2,000 just happened just now. All right, 1,900, 2,000. So, all right, we just jumped up 400 watts on the heat gun on low, and um, why don't we put this on high? Let's see what happens. Ready? It's on high right now, 2,700 watts on the screen. We are now pretty much over the rated wattage, right? It's now at the surge wattage, but can it hold it? That's the question, right? Very interesting. Look at that, 2,727 I saw a moment ago. This thing is holding. Wow. I mean, the heat gun is hot, as you can see. I'm just going to move it out of the way, but folks, 26, 2730, 2731 I saw a moment ago. Uh, wow, still holding, 2757. I'll put the high on the screen, of course, but guys, this is pretty nice. Again, rated 2400 watts. We're over 27 at a moment with the heat gun and three of these uh, fast chargers, and there it goes. All right, all right, so we did finally overload it. But still, that took a while. That was definitely longer than a surge, all right? So I'm gonna hold the heating gun because it's pretty hot right now. But guys, that's a success. This is a noise level test. Uh, right now the system is on, but it's not powering anything. So this is what it would normally sound like before we put a load on this. Now I'm going to turn on the AC outlets and then you're going to see what it sounds like with a load on it, about 1500 watts and the fans should kick on as well. Fourteen hundred watts so far. Sixteen hundred watts. As you can see, the fan is a little noisier now. It's a little higher. Okay, we're going to start our refrigerator test with the Delta II Max. And uh, yeah, how long will this last, right? How many hours or how many days? This is a big power station, you know. I mean, obviously there are larger ones, but this has the new lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, I'm going to take and put an image up on the right-hand side of the screen so you can see the specifications of the refrigerator and just know this is a newer refrigerator we bought this i believe in 2021 um we just unplugged it so it is nice and cold but we are going to run it on this power station and see how long 
we can get this to run. So currently we do have a hundred percent charge. All right, a hundred percent charge here at 10.03 in the morning on Monday. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go in the back and turn on the switch. So let me just do that. If I could find it, there it goes. We'll see the startup wattage, which won't be much. All right, 160 something. I, I'll, I'll put on the screen what that was, but we got 100% charge, all right? 10.03 in the morning on Monday, and we'll see how long this lasts. All right, I wanna share a quick tip with you. So in order to keep the Delta II Max on and running the whole time, right? Let's say we had a power outage like we are right now and we're running our refrigerator for hours or potential days. Well, you don't want the Delta II Max to turn off. In order to prevent that, what you're going to do is go into the Delta II Max um, on the EcoFlow app. You're going to go over to this little icon here, this little gear, click on that. Scroll down to where it says AC timeout. Well, really auto timeout. Turn unit timeout to never and turn AC timeout to never. And by doing that, this Delta II Max will stay on until it drains to zero. It will not turn off. And I know that doesn't sound good, but if the Delta II Max doesn't sense that there's something drawing power, at a certain point, it will turn off depending on the set settings you have in the app. All right. My refrigerator that I'm powering right now, you know, as you can see, isn't really pulling any power right now. And if it does that long enough, it might actually turn off the Delta II Max. But by changing those settings, we prevented that. So I hope that tip helps you. Four hours. What do we have for four hours? 90% in four hours. And it says we got 22 hours left based off 59 watts going out. 90% four hours. All right, a little over eight hours in and where are we at with battery? Well, let's take a look here. We're at 78%. Look at that. Now it's not using any power right now, but eight hours in, 78%. All right, we've got a 10 hour check, 10 hours in and that's it. We're gonna be checking tomorrow morning. So what do we have for 10 hours? All right, we're using 62 watts. We've got 73% in 10 hours. Not bad, 73%, 10 hours in. Tuesday morning, 21 hours into the test. And let's see how much battery we have left. 40% battery left with about 50 watts going to the refrigerator. Wow, I'll tell you, 21 hours in, we still have 40% left on the battery. That is something. I mean, this thing says 11 hours left based off of the 40%, uh, but that probably won't be the case. I don't think we'll get 20. I don't think we'll get 11 more hours, but wow, 21 hours in 40% left. All right, drum roll, please. 24 hours into the test. And what do we have here? We have 32% of the battery left 24 hours later. That is awesome. Again, this refrigerator is a newer refrigerator. It is definitely efficient. The compressor doesn't kick on too much. Um, but yeah, look at that. 32% left 24 hours later. All right, 28 hours and this thing is still going. And what do we have? 21%. 21% I'll tell you, this is something. Well, I guess we'll keep our eye on this. 28 hours in, 21% left. 30 hours in, what do we have on this thing? 30 hours in, 
we have 16% battery 30 hours in. This is amazing, I'll tell you. It's really, you know, and you could do so many more things with this besides power your refrigerator, right? Charge your cell phones, maybe plug in a fan. You know, there's just a bunch of stuff that you can do. So check that out. 30 hours, 16%. 32 hours. 9%. Thirty-two hours. Wow, we might be able to get to seven o'clock with nine percent. Thirty-two hours, nine percent. It's cutting it close. It's six forty-five, and uh, we have five percent left. So I don't know if we'll make it to thirty-three hours, but that's still pretty impressive. Thirty-three hours and ten minutes. What do we got? Wow, 1%. I don't even know how there's a blue bar up top. How is that a full blue bar with 1% and 59 watts going out? Any minute now this is going. 33 minutes and 33 hours and 10 minutes. 33 hours and 22 minutes. And that's it. I have to plug the refrigerator in. Not bad at all. And just imagine if you added an additional battery. All right, I'm gonna do a quick car charging test, but I've got a couple of surprises for you. One of the new things they did with the Delta II Max was they actually gave it two XT60 ports. That's right, you could plug in two solar panels or two car chargers. Check that out. So you could actually charge this even faster if your vehicle had two car chargers. Is that something? And so one of the things I also want to show you is in the app. So if I go to the app and I go over to car input, you see car input right there? If I click on that, I want you to see that you can now adjust the amperage on each of the car chargers. I can go down to four amps if I need to. And I guess depending on the age of the vehicle, right? Maybe some can't support eight amps. Now I'm gonna leave it at eight amps and we're gonna see what we get as we car charge the Delta II Max. Let's go ahead and plug in an XT60. I'm just gonna plug it into any port and uh, give it a second and see what I get here. Okay, I got wattage coming in. Input, I've got 117 watts, 104. I've got 104 watts going in, all right, from the car charger. I've got 20% on the battery. It says it would take 18 hours and 59 minutes to charge. Obviously, this is not the best way to charge, um, but it is a way to charge. And again, you can use two car chargers so just remember that all right guess what I'm getting my 104 watts and I found another car charger so let me go ahead and plug this in and let's see what we get with two car chargers here's the second one let's see what we get we got 104 right now let's plug that in all right now we have two XT60s plugged in and let's see what we get uh, 142, 156, 182, 193, 204. Look at that, 226 for a moment, but 204 watts. So we just cut this down with 20%. It says 19 hours and 7 minutes to charge. So we just cut down our charging time. Again, we normally wouldn't charge the power station with a, a car charger, but some people might. And again, you can adjust the amperage, don't forget. See that in the beginning of the video. But that is a successful test. All right, it is almost 12 o'clock in the afternoon. This is dead. You don't want these to sit around on zero too long. You really don't. Uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. You know, I recommend don't go any lower than 10% and uh, try to stay below 90%. That'll prolong the battery life. But we're gonna plug this in 
and then we're going to change the charging speed. So let me just plug the uh, outlet here in the back. And we can turn this on because this thing is rock solid dead after all the power tests we did. Did you not see them? I hope you saw the power tests. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go on the app now. And uh, I'm just going to go in and change the charging speed. Now, I, saw, I showed that earlier and I'll show it again. Um, as you can see here, um, we're going to go up to 1800 watts. And this is supposed to take um, about 1.1 hours in, uh, and it'll go to 80%. That's one of their claims. On AC, it'll charge to 80% in 1.1 hours. But if you actually combine the 1000 watts of solar, they say that you can charge this thing to 80% in 43 minutes combining solar and AC. Now it says four hours currently, um, but uh, give it a second. It uh, should kick in to the higher wattage. All right, I got 500 and change. For now it says about an hour based off the wattage. But again, let me show you in the app that you can go in and change the charging speeds. And it'll go back up in a minute. So you see there that um, we're showing uh, 1600 watts. You can go down as low as 200 watts if you need to. You might have a home with like old outlets and you don't want to trip the breaker. But we're going to go all the way up to the 1800 watts. And it might take a while because the unit could be a little warm at this point. So again, 12 o'clock, we're going to see how long it takes to charge. Currently the unit is telling me it'll take about an hour. It's got 1% on the battery. We will check back in, uh, let's say 30 minutes. So the reason why we were getting like 500 watts when we first started the charging test was we had the switch on in the slow position. We turned it to the fast position and uh, I could show you what we're getting now. So we are getting about 1,200 watts based off what the app is saying. So we're getting about 1,200 watts. Let me turn the unit over and I'll show you, uh, you know, what we're getting and how long it says it'll take. Okay, six minutes in. Let's just turn on the screen and you can see here now we're getting uh, 1,200, almost 13. Yeah, it's going up. So, you know, the unit's cool enough now. We're going to, we're going up probably to the 1800 watts. Again, it still says it'll take an hour. We've got 4% on the battery within six minutes. Again, we're gonna check in 30 minutes. So we'll check at 1230 and see what we have as far as charging is concerned. But that's pretty nice. And again, as I showed you in the app a moment ago, you can adjust those charging speeds depending on how old your home is, as well as your breakers and your outlets. All right, we should be at 30 minutes now, about that, right? Let's turn the screen on. We still have 1700 watts going into this thing and we're at 32%, so it says 56 minutes remaining. All right, 1700 watts, 32%, just a half hour in to charging. Now, if you want to adjust how low the battery goes or how high, right as you drain it and as you charge it just go into energy management here this will allow you to say i don't want it to go any lower than 10 percent all right and you can you can say up to 30 percent as far as discharge but as far as charge limits concerned you can go to 100 or you can go as low as 50. i usually do 10 percent on the discharge and 90 percent on the charge limit, but very, very helpful. One hour in, let's take a look and see where we're at. All right, so it dropped down to 1260 watts. We're at 63%. So right now it's saying it's gonna take another 44 minutes. Again, uh, one hour in, 63% with 1260 watts going in. One and a half hours. Where are we at in one and a half hours? 
We are at 88% with 1,275 watts going in. It says about 14 minutes it'll be done. One and a half hours, 88%. One hour and 41 minutes, where are we at? 99%, as you can see, it's slow charging. It's uh, inputting 646 watts. Says it'll be about a minute or so. I'll keep my eye on that. One hour and 47 minutes, and what do we have? 100%. So here's the equipment we're going to use for today's solar test. I got some extra cable because I always like to try to put the solar panels out a little further. I've got two XT60i cables, right? So don't use XT60. Make sure you use XT60i. It's got this little piece of metal here and it will give you better performance, especially with the Delta 2 Max. All right, so two XT60i cables, the cable, you know, the uh, MC4 disconnector tool when you're done so you can disconnect your cables and the solar angle guide and I'll show you that later on. And then these are two 220 watt solar panels. These are by Facial Solar Panels by EcoFlow. And as you can see they come in a nice case, you know. So the case can be used as well as a kickstand, but you know, they come in some nice cases, so that's what we're going to be using. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put up some specs because whenever you have a power station, you want to make sure you're getting the right solar panels, All right? If you get solar panels that are more powerful than what the power station can take, you can actually damage the solar controller um, in the power station, so be, just be aware. So let me put up some information on both the power station and the solar panels, all right? So you could see that it's a really good match, okay? Take a look at that there and hit pause. If you wanna review it, we're gonna go ahead and move on with our review. All right, we've got our panels angled the best we can with these kickstands, okay? And um, so as you could see here, if I take the solar angle finder, you'll see that I wish the panel would have gone up a little further, but this is the best I can do. It's pretty centered. I would have loved for it to be in the target, but let's see what we have here with these two 220 watt panels set up. All right, we're going to connect the two XT60s in the back. Let me turn the unit around. And then we're going to take a look at the app and see what type of solar we're getting this morning. We do have some clouds in the sky, but just a little bit. Let's see what we get. All right, we're going to plug in the first one. We're going to plug in the second one. Again, these are 220 watts each. I mean, this thing supports 500 watts on each of the XT60. So you could really get yourself probably two 400 watt panels and plug it in here. But uh, let's see what we're getting right now. And again, so we're currently getting 271 watts of solar, 272. All right, and we're gonna do another test in a little bit because uh, we're gonna wait to see if we can reduce um, you know, just get a little bit more sun. But 272 watts so far out of two 220 watt panels. Check that out, 367 watts out of a potential 440 watts with these two panels. Uh, temperature's about 59 degrees, and uh, we do have some clouds in the sky. The sun, you know, the, the wattage does drop as we hit clouds, but I'll show you real quick. As you can see here, we are dealing with a mixed bag, but uh, that sun is pretty strong and it's really not hot out and that's actually helping as well. 372 watts, and you know what? Can we power something while we're charging solar, right? Well, let's go ahead and turn on the AC outlets. I'm gonna power that charger. That's about a 600 watt charger, all right? So let's watch and see, and yeah, check that out. 
we are powering the charger so it can actually charge this battery, right? So we've got 300, 400 going out. Look at that, 500 and 300 and change coming in depending on the shading with the sun. So real good success here with this demonstration just showing you that uh, not only can you plug in up to a thousand watts of solar, right? Because each XT60 supports 500 watts, all right? But at the same time, you can power your refrigerator if you have a power outage, right? Think about that. Just get longer solar cables. You can't go too long, but charge this solar while you are powering your home a uh, couple of devices for a couple of hours. And if you buy the uh, expansion batteries, like we showed you earlier, um, you can get that longer run time. All right, guys? So this is the uh, MC4 disconnector tool. Really simple, very inexpensive. We'll definitely put links in the description and it just makes it easier to take these off. As you can see here, there are two pins, right? And so you take this piece here and you're going to lay it underneath, right? And now it's pushing up against the pins. Now all you need to do is really just pull out this end and that's it. Very easy to use. So this was the first video that we did and let me show you real quick what we covered and then I'll provide a link in the upper right hand corner you can click on if you want to watch it. So look at all this. I mean we did detailed specs. We went over all the key features. If you're a beginner, we went over no before you buy, which is really good. We went over uh, estimated run times. So if you want to see this video, I'm going to put a link in the upper right hand corner in a moment. All right, be ready. Uh, here comes the link right now in the upper right hand corner. Click on that if you want to see the video. So let me cover the four ways you can charge the Delta 2 Max. Of course, you can do AC charging. You can do car charging, you can do solar charging, and you can do the smart generator. They've got a dual fuel generator, which is propane or gas, which is really nice. You can also combine um, AC charging and solar charging. And actually, you can charge the Delta II Max to 80% in 43 minutes if you combine those two. One of the great things about the Delta II Max is it's expandable. You can add up to two batteries to get over six kilowatts. And the battery cable is right here on the top. Pull that out and simply connect it. There you go. Connected and charging. And uh, if we look at the side here, You'll see that we have uh, two battery ports. One is being used by the battery connected, and here's your other port. So you can connect up to two batteries. So really, really nice. So guys, let me go over some pros and some cons. I'll start off with cons. There are very few. But to me, one con is, you know, the unit's kind of heavy, right? I mean, again, this is a lithium iron phosphate power station. It's very powerful. The batteries will last for many, many years, especially if you maintain them. But uh, this is a 50 pound unit, right? Uh, or 23 kilogram. Now, the only other thing I would have liked to see on the add-on batteries was if you could use the add-on batteries, right? Because the, ba the add-on battery is only made to be connected to the Delta II Max. But it would have been nice that if you bought an add-on battery that you could still use it with like DC charging, like, uh, USB ports, stuff like that. So I would have liked to see that. But let me go ahead and cover our pros. And there are a bunch of them, honestly. So number one, this thing is super powerful. Check out our power test. It did very well. All right. And obviously with the surge of 4,800 watts and the capability of handling 2,400 watts, very, very nice. I like that they added the two XT60 ports here in the back, right? So now you can have two solar panels or two car chargers. Think about that. So that's a really nice thing that they did. And the solar capability, you can have 500 watts of solar on each XT60, and that'll give you a thousand watts of solar capability. The LFP batteries, right? This thing has 3000 cycles 
and then it'll go to 80%. I mean, it is phenomenal. Again, if you maintain the battery, it will last you years and years. And, um, you know, it's expandable, right? So you can add two batteries. Love that. So you can go over six kilowatts in, uh, you know, battery and battery capacity. I have to say this, you know, I have never seen a app better than an EcoFlow app. And, you know, I know this is a sponsored video, but I'm just being brutally honest with you. The app has so many capabilities. I've showed you some in this video, but uh, I have to say it's really a great app. It's phenomenal. Now, you do get two USB uh, Type-C, 100 watts, so that's really nice. And lastly, you do get a five-year warranty on this thing. So guys, I tell you something, I had a ball making this testing video. It did take me longer. I'm going through some stuff in my life and I'm not able to do the, the amount of videos that I'd like to do. And I just want to make sure they're quality videos, you know. So I hope you found this video helpful. I really do. And if you do, take a moment, give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and it'll help the video. By the way, follow us on social media. I'll put our social media up here on the top. Check out our new Tesla channel. We got a Tesla um, earlier this year. We've got over 11,000 miles. We've done some accessory reviews for now, but we're going to come out with some videos going over the differences between a gas vehicle and an electric vehicle and some of the challenges that we faced or just the realities of going into a Tesla. Lastly, if you want to subscribe to our channel here at Tech Made Easy, Go ahead and click the round Tech Made Easy logo and you'll be able to subscribe to our channel and become a member of the family. I will put some Power Station videos on the right side. If you want to click that, that'll be our Power Station playlist. Guys, thank you so, so much. Have a great day.